Want a better way to predict your risk of having a fracture better than bone density maybe? Yeah, sure. Yeah, there you go, I'm Dr. Brad Weening. Welcome to Talking With Docs. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzo. Okay. We are talking about the FRAX index. Okay, an the index. The frickin' FRAX. I can't believe we're finally talking about the frickin' FRAX. That's what people call us. Oh, yeah, they do. <laughs> so this is a survey or a questionnaire that allows you to assess a bunch of different variables in your life and about you as a person that can lead us to a predictive guide of whether or not you're at increased risk of breaking something. Think about it. Simple questions that you can answer that will give you an idea of your 10-year risk of breaking a hip or having a major osteoporotic fracture. It's and brilliant. So, start, so a major fracture being wrist fracture, shoulder fracture, hip fracture, back fracture. Those are kind of the big yeah. four. You can break other things too with osteoporosis, but those yeah. are the big four. It's called the FRAX questionnaire, okay. F-R-A-X. I like that because it's almost onomatopoeia, isn't it? It is a little bit. Because FRAX kind of the sound that a bone makes, as yes. we know. And um, so this was started in 2008 by a professor. Like hiss <laughs> or swoosh. Okay. Or buzz. Okay. Still yeah. Right. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. You did. Actually, you mean to interrupt you. I did. Yeah, so Professor John Kennis, a guy mm -hmm. from Sheffield, mm -hmm. um, with some controversial collaboration with the WHO. We're uh, not really sure. Mostly it was the guys at Sheffield and their group. But and the WHO was involved a little bit. Yeah, the who. The who. Not the band, but yeah. the organization was involved, I think, and they collaborated, but now it's really the FRAX questionnaire. We don't say it's the who questionnaire. Interesting that in the 70s, there was the who and then the guess who. Yeah, that was confusing for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the guess who was Canadian. Yeah. Okay, it was Canada Day coming, but yeah. you think, it's like, guess who? Yeah, well, it's I'm not the who, obviously. No, it's certainly. a bunch of different guys. And it's not the World Health Organization. No, definitely not. Okay, so we're gonna go through the questions and talk about how each factor uh, increases your risk a little okay, bit. Okay, so get a piece of paper and a pen or something that you can take notes on, your phone or whatever. Keep track of your answers and at the end we'll tell you what each answer correlates to in terms of increased risk of fracture. We'll wait for like a second, you know, when they put that, that music on. Yeah, ba -da -ba -ba -ba. yeah, yeah, like uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Jeopardy. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Here we go. I think our editors and <laughs> camera guys should do this too, just That's in it. case. There you All go. right. Okay, so number one is age. How old are you? Okay. Easy question. So why does this matter? Age matters because we know that as you increase your age, you increase, you increase your risk of fracture. We've talked a lot about this. You really want to maximize your bone density by 30 because it's either a flat or slowly decreasing line for the rest of your life. Or minimal increases with some of the papers that we've reviewed, yes. the exercises you can do. Yeah. Okay, so next question you're going to ask is whether you are born male or born female. Okay, because so your that sex. has that has risks as well. Okay, next. Uh, number three is the combination of your height and your weight and or your BMI. Your height itself does not increase your risk, mm -hmm. but your height related to your weight or either an elevated or reduced BMI particularly no, produced, really. increases your risk okay. of a fracture. All right, so you're writing all these down, writing these answers. Height and at weight. the end we're gonna tell you how much that affects you. Right. Have you had a previous fracture? Makes now, sense. Yes. But I mean an osteoporotic fracture. I don't mean you fell off the ladder and broke your wrist, or you were hit by a car and right, broke your sky femur. Diving. No, yeah, or a yeah. number of high-risk activities, snowboarding over a rail. And these are yes-no answers, obviously. That's it. If you've had a previous osteoporotic fracture, like a hip fracture or a wrist fracture, falling from a standing height, Okay. yes or no? Next one is the family history of a fracture, very specifically a parent that has a broken hip, or had a broken hip. If you know if your parent had a broken hip, write that down, and remember it, we're gonna tell you what that risk yes, does no. to. Okay, next. Uh, do you smoke? Okay. If you are a smoker, yes. If you're not a smoker, no. And you can go on to the FRAX website and you do this question, right. but we're just doing it for you right now. Yes. Okay. Do you drink? Uh, alcohol. And, and the amount Sorry. of alcohol is more than three units per day. Yes, which okay. you can argue about that one. And I mean, it doesn't, you can't really include it if you drink 21 on the weekend, 21 units on the weekend and nothing during the week. Right. Okay. It's three, three per day. Okay, interesting. Okay, next. Do you have rheumatoid arthritis? Okay. Yes or no? Yes or no. Have you, do you have a history of corticosteroid use? So particularly prednisone would be the most common one that people would know. Yes or no? Have you taken that? Yes. Um, and do you have some kind of metabolic disease that affects your bone density? So we call that secondary osteoporosis. Right. Okay, if you do, click yes. If you don't, click no. However, if you've had a bone mineral density test, Depending on the results of that, you can omit that question. So things like diabetes, hyperthyroidism, there's a specific list that's provided with the questionnaire. Okay. Good. That's it.
Well, that's all the questions. All so questions. remember, you can go to the website, the FRAX, type in FRAX and do this questionnaire, but we're doing it with you right now. Yeah. And we can't give you the exact numbers because it's proprietary. FRAX uses an algorithm to calculate this, okay. compares it to a database, but we can give you a ballpark of what it means. Okay, let's go through it. Right. Okay. What was our first question that we asked people? Age. Age, yes. Age, definitely. As you increase your age, your increased risk of fracture goes up. For example, if you're 70 versus 50, your risk increases by 4 to 5 times. That's okay. probably the biggest factor that increases risk. And unfortunately, the least modifiable. Right. You can't. Fair. You can't Time that. machine is the only way. No. So, is what it is. Okay, number two is sex, male versus female. Right, male versus female. We know that in, um, females are more likely to break, have an osteoporotic fracture than males. Okay. Right. And it's a big difference between the ages of about 30 to, well, it's not a big difference between the ages of about 30 to 50. Right. Uh, but postmenopausal, 50 to 70, it's a big risk. We've talked difference. lots about this okay. in other videos. Women have like a 2.5 times increased risk in that time compared to men. And then once you get over 80, the risk between the men and the women gets smaller. Yes, because men start to lose bone at a higher rate. They, start, they really right. work hard to catch up. So it's about 2.5 to 3 times that multiplier, I think. Okay. Um, so BMI. So combination okay. of your height and weight. Yes, BMI. So specifically the target is the BMI of less than 20. Yeah. If we are always telling people, you know, you've got to lose weight, you've got to lose weight, you've got to lose weight. Here's a situation where if you're too thin, you don't have enough weight, then you're at increased risk of fracture. And I'd say clinically speaking, we see this a lot. Yeah. yeah. As people get older, often nutrition is an issue, mm -hmm. dentition, access to food, like all food insecurity, issues. all the issues. And then we see smaller, older people who mm -hmm. are more frail mm -hmm. and break their hips. Frailty. Uh, and so if your body mass index is 20 around there, you're at a 1.3 times increased risk of fracture in the next 10 years. Yeah. If your BMI is lower than 18.5, your risk can be 1.5 times or higher okay. than someone of the same sex. Okay, next uh, question. You broke something yourself. You have uh, history fracture. of an osteoporosis fracture, so wrist, shoulder, back, hip. This is a big one. Yeah. Doubles your risk. Wow. Now you have twice as, your risk is twice as high of breaking something again in the next 10 years. Would you also not say when you're in a fracture clinic, how often do you see someone yes. saying, hey, I broke this, broke this, or you're yeah. seeing someone for a fracture, like, oh yeah, I broke my other shoulder yeah. last year, broke yeah. my other wrist last year, yeah. just falling from a standing height, not a severely traumatic event. Turns out it's twice as likely. There you go. Okay, one of your parents has had a hip fracture. This is also kind of a little bit scary. You're like, oh yeah. no, mom broke her hip. Dad yeah. broke his hip. Can't change that. No. Right. But it makes you nervous about your own hips. No. So you now walk around your parents like, hey, easy, easy. Remove and all the carpets. Don't let your parent break their hips. And the same thing in clinic. Would you not say that you see the kid, the adult children? They're like, do yeah. I have to worry about this now? And yeah. you're like, yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. You 1.5 times do. So yeah. your, your risk goes up 1.5 times uh, than okay. it would have if you didn't have a parent. But if you stop your parent from breaking hip, I don't think it affects things. <laughs> like if you take the rugs out of your parents' house. Or if you put them in one of those weevil suits yeah, where you kind of can't really fall out. You your mom comes down and says, why'd you move my bed to the main floor? That's to right. To remove all the rugs, because I don't want to break my hip. That's right. I'm really, I'm really care about me, though. I really don't care about your yeah. I just don't want to go more myself. I don't think it works out. No, I, I would agree. Okay, next one, smoking. We, it's like, come on, we know smoking's bad for us. Like, it's People not still new. smoking. People still smoke. People still smoke. 1.3. Yeah. 1.3 times. That increases your risk 1.3 times. That's a modifiable risk factor. 100%. Please don't start. And, we're, and time will tell whether mm -hmm. or not vaping is going to have the same issue because yeah. of the nicotine and some of the other chemicals in it. And I know that someone's going to write a comment, oh, vaping's better. It is probably better than smoking. Yes. But it's not better than nothing. Yeah. Vaping's still chemicals. Yeah. 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 Okay, what about drinking this? We this, did drinking. No, we didn't do drinking. We yet. did three. Did we say three? No. Oh, no, yeah. That was oh, in the yes, questionnaire. Yes. Holy cow. Okay. Three. You know why you did that? Because you want to skip over yeah, it. So I'm in <laughs> denial. It's okay. the first stage of grief. First of all, three drinks a day. It's a fair amount of drinks. You, Unfortunately, you might have a problem at three drinks a day. Well, uh, yeah, I think that's an yeah, issue. Yeah, you definitely have a health problem, but you might yes. have other problems. Yeah, 1.4 times. Yeah. You've increased your risk of fracture by 1.4 times, not to mention you probably can't walk a straight line right. after three drinks personally. And both the smoking and the drinking probably relate to a state of chronic inflammation that we know is bad for our bones and causes increased turnover, that kind of stuff. Plus a lot of drinks gives you an increased risk of falls Yes. at the bar. Fair. Yeah. Right? Um, okay, medication you're taking. If you're taking a, cord a corticosteroid, yes. prednisone or something like that, yeah. that, your increased risk there is a function of the dose, okay, it depends on the dose of that medication you're taking. And the duration? 
Yeah, yeah. I think so. But it can be up to 1.5 to two times as high, increasing your risk. Right. And the trouble with a drug like prednisone is it it works very well and to treat a lot of very severe, potentially life-threatening conditions, but there are some consequences. So, I mean, obviously, I would say most physicians, like almost all of them, would, would try to use as little as possible yes. for as short a period as possible. And people are always trying to get off them. Like, Tapering off them. Yes. Like if you're something like a polymyalgia rheumatica, how often do you see someone they're like, oh, I have, yep. I'm on 10 and now I went to 5 and then I went to 2 and then I had to go back up because I'm still sore. But it has consequences. It makes our bones soft. So it's more really to be aware of it. You're not yes. just taking, people aren't just taking prednisone. This is not anabolic steroids. This is corticosteroids. So yes. and, uh, kind of know, it is what it is, one of those things. Reactive airways, people sometimes right. take it. There's it's a lot of asthma. conditions where you have to take it. Yep. Now, in terms of the cortisone that we inject in these, not so much because yep. that's a local uh, phenomenon. It's not a, a, a systemic thing that goes on for a while. Okay, next one, rheumatoid arthritis. Oh yeah, rheumatoid arthritis, okay, that can increase your risk 1.5 to two times. And we see this, we see unfortunately a lot of people have fractures of rheumatoid mm -hmm. arthritis. Also when we replace their joints, mm -hmm. we have to proceed with caution because their bones can be softer. Yes. And again, not particularly modified. Is it, do, if you... I don't know. I, I don't mean, think that treating the rheumatoid arthritis symptoms yes. necessarily improves your bone density. Often yeah. they are on bone density medication yeah. because they have rheumatoid arthritis, but the medications themselves do not alleviate that risk, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, there's a lot of new biologics that you can use to treat RA. Right. I, w I wonder, and I don't know if that answer is out there yet, but yeah. perhaps it will be one I th day. Yeah, I think usually they're still on bisphosphonates. Okay, uh, and then the last one is the bone density portion. Sec well, there's secondary oh, osteoporosis. Yes. So if you have if you have a disease that does affect your bone dense, your bone mineral density, yep. then that can increase your risk of 1.2 to 1.3 times. However, if you have one of those diseases and you had a bone mineral density, uh, you can mo you can negate the disease and just look at the bone mineral density, which leads okay. into the one you were going to say. Bone mineral density. Yes, bone mineral density. Bone mineral density is another, but and, and bone mineral density is one of the factors, but it's not the only thing that you need to determine your risk of fracture. I mean, um, if your bone mineral density uh, is less than 2.5, the standard deviation. deviations, yeah. then your risk goes up by about two or two two times. Right. Okay, which is like some of the other things that we discussed. Right. In isolation. Right. Yeah. And and t gold standard currently is DEXA. A lot of people, thanks for leaving comments, talked about REMS. We're actually going to do a video about REMS and some new-ish technology that may kind of uh, come alongside DEXA or potentially supersede it. We don't know, but we're going to do a specific video about REMS, so you don't have to leave a comment saying, hey, what about REMS? But DEXA currently is the gold standard. Okay, and now, if, you, if let's say you did this questionnaire and we just yeah. gave you the answers and you got a couple of them, we're like, oh, that increased my risk 1.5 times, this increased my risk two times, they're multiplied by each other, okay? So if you have Three. something, yeah. Right. Like that? That was fast. I used to do flashcards. So that's like three yeah. times, right? 1.5 times. Really? Yeah. That's a nice thing to do. Yeah. He yeah. really did a lot with you then because yeah. you're good at these. So he, so he only had grade nine. Rest yeah. in peace, yeah. Fred. Mm -hmm. um, and we'd do flashcards and then he would do them. Eventually he did them till I could beat them. Oh. Which is like grade five or six. And then, really? And Mr. Lebeck, my grade six teacher, used to pull kids up into the class and you'd sit on the stool beside him and yeah. a kid would hold them up. Yeah. And I could beat Mr. Lebeck. Really, I you beat the my, teacher? I was faster. I mean, he obviously five. he knew the answers. Yeah. But in grade six, wow. but I could I could think faster than him. I'm not surprised. Just, just for that. <laughs> There's lots of other stuff. I can't That's why it's so hard to make a video with you because <laughs> you think so fast. It keeps me on my toes. Yeah. There you um, go. So yeah, so you multiply those factors together. Okay. So we asked you a bunch of questions, you answered them, and then you added multipliers, and those are your increased risk of fracture in 10 years. Some of these risks are modifiable, some are not. Right. If they're modifiable start modifying them. So this is the FRAX questionnaire. You go to the website, it's proprietary. They'll have it for your country. It's free. You'll answer the questions and at the end it'll spit out your 10-year risk of a hip fracture or a major osteoporotic fracture. Right, and there's three kind of groups, low, moderate, um, high. Uh, high. So That's less than 10% in than increased risk. You really don't do anything. In that 10 to 20 range, you kind of monitor it, maybe modify some lifestyle stuff. Greater than 20% increased risk, you probably are talking to a specialist about considering medications. And if you're wondering, this is a, a survey or a questionnaire that has been validated yeah. against um, DEXA and other measures. So it is a, multiple times in multiple different studies. Yeah. Um, couple shortcomings though, I would say it does not incorporate your specific risk of falls. So someone no. that has balance issues or um, mobility issues, it doesn't specifically assess the quality of your bone. True. Right? Um, and it also does not assess your response to um, bisphosphonates.
true. Yeah. Yeah, those are all true. And it gives you a, a risk. It's not an absolute. And they're working on tweaking it too. It can't say you're going to break your hip. It right. just says this is your chances. Your chances increase. Yeah. And we've just given you some ballpark of what the FRAX will do because it's proprietary. Like yep. we said, nobody knows inside how the algorithm is working. Uh, but I suggest you go try it out. There you go. If you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to our channel. Leave a comment about this. And maybe share it with someone that you know is worried about the risk of fracture. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.